you're listening to the Sanditon Chronicles, where we talk all things Sanditon and Sanditon adjacent. Come along with us as we dissect all of your favorite characters, scenes, and dialogue. We have so much to tell you. Hey guys, welcome back to the Sanditon Chronicles. I'm Maureen. I'm Janice. And today we are talking about Ralph. We did a live the other day and we were reminded that um, (laughs) we might have forgotten to include Ralph on our lineup. So we added him and we are going to, now he's too, he's not seen enough and he's not, I mean, he is a storyline throughout, but he is not seen enough for us to really dig into his character and talk about the nonverbals and talk about how we think his character would react because we didn't see him enough. So we're going to talk about him and Charlotte together is what we're going to do tonight. Um, and we'll talk about him on his own for as much as we can, but a lot of who he is revolves around Charlotte, I think, or at least that's what we were given. So I think now when we, we meet him at the end of season two, we've talked about him in season two, where she had mentioned that Ralph wanted to marry her and that she would never, because Allison was ribbing her about that in season right, two. Right, right, yeah. And she made it clear that she did no intention of marrying Ralph. She did not want to marry Ralph. That was not where she was going with this. That's not what she was going to do. And then at the end of season two, I'm engaged to Ralph. Well, he brings it up to yeah. the Parkers and Georgiana and and says, has she told you our good news? You know? <laughs> um, and so it was not a traditional, I mean, it was an old fashioned engagement in that the families expected it. It was expected. I'm sure they just started saying, "What? When are we going to have? When are you going to have your wedding?" You know. Yeah, I especially think- from what he tells us later about how it was just always expected. Oh yeah, he did say that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure that he ever formally and ask her. You know, I think Ralph would have just based on how Ralph would talk to her and how much he hyper focused on her yeah i think he would have asked her even if it was expected because i think he i think he had feelings for a charlotte that didn't exist it was a charlotte that he knew from childhood it was a charlotte that was in his head but he loved that version of charlotte and i think he loved her enough to do that even if it was just expected of him i don't know maybe maybe it's just the way he said you were never given the choice yeah you know, that's why I think that, but because I think her father put his foot down and I think he was like, okay, it's time. We're going to do this now. You're, you're marrying Ralph. It's been said, you're going to marry Ralph. You've had your fun in Sanditon. Come home. Now you're going to get married. But we don't know how that came about. In no, terms of that's how it worked in my head though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. But, but that still doesn't mean that he asked to marry, you know, yeah. ask for her to marry him. Yeah. In and a I yes think, or no kind of way, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the reason I think that he would have is just because in the first couple of episodes where we see him and he's just, he's very nervous about meeting these other people because he does want to make a good impression on the Parkers. They're very important to Charlotte. And at first that trumps everything else. Well, these people are important to Charlotte. So I want to meet them. I want to be a part of this. It eventually dives into, I don't ever want her to come back to Sanditon. I don't ever want to be around these people again. Right. I never want to be here again. But at first, he wants it because it's important to her. It's the same reason he gives her that book. Because he knows it's important to her that she's seen by him. So he gets her that, even though he's not a big reader. You know, he's not big into the things she's into. Right. He's He adores her. But like you said, it's... He's a daughter. And so he's in the habit of adoring her. Yes, exactly. And it's a Charlotte yeah. that doesn't exist. And uh, I, you get the feeling that she, he has no idea what she went through in Sanditon, which isn't too surprising because I don't think she would have talked with him about it other than she, she came back very sad the first yes. time around and, and just as sad the second time around <laughs> after she had been there uh, for different reasons, but yeah. And so it's interesting when she, for he first meets the Parkers and they have that party and they're trying to get, and Charlie's really good at that game, which I don't remember the name of it, but where they pulled the alcohol and the, the berries, like um, raisins or something out yeah. of the fire uh, being burned. Um, I, yeah. He was not good at it. And she was very good at it. And then they have the discussion about um, the poetry and, he didn't know anything about it. And she, of course, knew who the poet was. Mm-hmm. And then they, the next scene we see is when they're on the beach 
And he's hesitant to even try and learn the bowling game that they are playing. And, but finally, um, Tom gets him to play, you know, he's like, yeah. I have a feeling you'd be very good at this. And which is good because then he gets caught up with Arthur and Tom in playing the game. And Charlotte has a chance to talk to um, the girls, yeah. you know, to Augusta and um, Leo. Leo, who have come to see them and to see Georgiana. Yeah. So that was good. <clears throat> so he felt a little more accepted, I think, then. But yeah, pretty awkward and felt definitely like an outsider the whole yeah. time. And everything that Ralph did, you can say all the things you want about Ralph, but everything he did was from a position of um, insecurity. Oh, insecurity. Everything that he's done is because he's so insecure about who he is, what his place is, what, even for Charlotte, I, he, every time that Charlotte would know, like that game you were talking about in season, in episode one that you were talking about where they're talking at the table and every time Charlotte would know something and he wouldn't, his facial expression altered, his body language stiffened. Like he, he was starting to realize that he wasn't good enough for her. And I think that that well, played at least into... he, he was a fish out of water. He was in a yeah. place that was very awkward to him. I don't think he blamed it on her. I think he blamed it on the town. I don't think he blamed it on her at all, but I think he was realizing that, okay, she knows about things and I don't know about things. And yeah. she, she's better at this and I'm no good at this. It's just, it felt like every time every, when they were in San Antonio, every time they were together, it was their differences were highlighted. Well, they actually, one of the first scenes we see now that I think about it on in um, season two is when they're coming in in the carriage and she's excitedly pointing out the sea to him and telling him, you know, just pointing out things for her, him to look at. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's all the whole new, I mean, think about what Charlotte was like when she arrived, what Allison was like when she arrived, it's a whole new experience for him. So small wonder that he's insecure. And I think he's insecure because she never made a verbal commitment to him. Yeah. And I think the difference being with Allison and Charlotte, when they first got to the town was they seemed to find their place very easily. And uh -huh. Ralph didn't ever find his place because his place no. wasn't there. He was totally it, concentrated on going back home, taking her back home. Yeah. And I don't think... I wanted to think of Ralph as this buffoon. <laughs> That's how I wanted to view him. I wanted to view him as small town, not very worldly, not very knowledgeable. He's just this country bumpkin who doesn't really know it. That's how I wanted to view Ralph. But he wasn't a stupid man. <laughs> he no. just didn't like the same thing she did. So I think that you're right because when he came over and said, did she share with you the happy news? You cannot convince me that anyone in that circle thought of it as happy news. <laughs> Except, Except for Ralph. For yeah. Because Charlotte well, could barely get it out of her mouth. And the look on the Parker's face and Georgiana's face was not one of, yay! It was one of, what are you talking about? <laughs> and and he, I think he had to have seen that. Well, yeah, one would think that they were, they had a shocked look on their faces. He didn't see her face, which was just sort of like, okay, I guess I'm going to tell you this knowing that they were not going to like it because she had said that she didn't want to marry him, you know? So yeah, it's, I will say this, it, he was trying to be really thoughtful when he bought her that he book, you know, he was trying to do things to me and he had a surprisingly at first um, positive attitude towards the Colburns because he just thought that she had been their uh, governess and didn't really pick up on the relationship till later, you know? And I really wonder, um, well, so he met him at the dance, you know, they all met at the dance. And then she, he's really put off about the fact that he, she knows all these dukes and duchesses and, you know, and is uh i didn't know you were in such great company you know that was her his line and how he felt just completely awkward yeah always he always felt that way and i think people did sort of look down on him because they did see him as a country bumpkin 
like the Montroses. I think that they were like, he's of no consequence. We're not going to pay that much attention to him. Of course, Charlotte didn't have a huge relationship with the Montroses at all, but right. still they were together and the, at the ball scenes and they were together at the, at the city events or the community events. And right. he could see he was of no consequence to anyone except for Charlotte and Lady Susan and Mary, probably. I think even Tom didn't really give him much effort or time. Even that scene where we first see him in the, uh, season three and there when they're in the Trafalgar house. Tom is just going on and talking about Charlotte and how great, because that's who he knows. That's what he loves. It wasn't Tom being mean or cruel, but Tom had no investment in Ralph. But at least Tom, when they were at the beach, Mm -hmm. Tom and Arthur took time with him to show them the game and get him to play. So it wasn't that they were being rude or anything. No. And of course he goes back to, in the story, he goes back to uh, Willingdon because she's going to London with Georgiana for the mm-hmm. trial. So he knows that she's not ready to leave yet. So we don't know how he got back there. Or if he, you know, we don't know if they used a carriage and took him back. He just went back to Willingdon. And then we again don't know how, when he returns, when he reads in the papers that the trial's over and that Georgiana has won, now he's going to come take charlotte home and again we don't know he just appeared Mm -hmm. and and yelled to charlotte who was quite taken aback you know she was already feeling guilty about the fact that she hadn't um gone back hadn't you know that she'd been delaying her her uh departure yeah and here he is calling her to it and she of course uses the excuse that she wants to say for Georgiana's party, mm-hmm. her celebration. So, and I guess it's after the party that they, when is it they go to Herrick Park? It's funny how, you know, you just accept these sequences and you don't <laughs> even remember exactly when and how they, I think that the actor who played Ralph did a very masterful he, job. He did. And I yeah. think that's why we can see that it's not, he's not a bad guy. He's not a stupid man. He's not, I know a lot of the fandom wants to hate him, but he is not a hateable character because he played his part well. He was actually incredibly graceful and kind to Charlotte. Yes, he was. He didn't have to and- let her out like that. He did because he did love her. He right. he didn't want he didn't want to be cruel to anyone. Everything he did was out of fear that she he could feel her slipping away. When they go to Hayrick Park, it's actually they interrupt the tea that the Montroses are having with the Colburns. Right. Yeah. And she sits. Right. They sit down at the table with them, which was super awkward. And and somebody asks um, when how soon their wedding is, and mm-hmm. then they he talks about oh it's just two weeks, and you know earlier he had said something to her about how her mother was you know already decorating the church and yeah that's why I think this whole thing was happening really without Charlotte's input. Yeah, I, I agree with they you. They were I trying think, to force it to happen. Well, I think Charlotte had just kind of succumbed to the obedient child. Okay, well, I don't, I'll do whatever you want. And I think with the wedding, it was, that was her, the attitude that she took was she didn't want to make waves. She didn't want to be disobedient. She went along with it because she felt she had to, not because she wanted to. So she didn't really have, she, I don't think it was that she couldn't have a say in the wedding. I think it was that she chose not to have as much of a say and let her let her family decide what was best rather than her putting in her input because she didn't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't, wasn't stopping it though, either. No. Not directly. She was just delaying it. Mm-hmm. I know? wonder if part of her was hoping that there would be an amicable end to them before the wedding took place. And that's why she kept postponing and kept postponing going home. I mean, obviously there's other reasons why she postponed going home that are real but I'm wondering if that was in the back of her mind of when she goes home, this is going to get very real. And when she goes home, the wedding planning is going to begin in earnest and she will be marrying him. Yeah. I mean, I do think that's all true, but I also think that she, I mean, you know, she's just ready to give in and, and cause she kind of given up on, mm-hmm. on anything else. And then things change when Colburn comes up and talks to her very directly about yes. how he feels and she's like i've promised my i've promised ralph i've promised my parents mm-hmm. you know 
um, which tells you what the truth of the matter was. If it was yes. really about Ralph, she wouldn't have mentioned her parents. Mm -hmm. It was about being obedient to her parents. It was about sitting, taking the load off of her parents. Yeah, that's right. And I there think with Ralph, there was only a couple times, and I talked about this in live that we had the other day, but there was only a couple of moments where he really got under my skin. And one was when he came up to her and said, I've come to take you home. Okay, well, if you knew Charlotte at all, you would know that she is very independent and she thinks independently. So to come and whisk her off. But again, that was, okay, you've had enough time here. You're, you're altering. And I think that's because he says that when he's sitting down with Lady Susan at the ball, he said, I don't like who she is here. Because right. to him, all he's ever known is Charlotte and Willingdon. And right. that is that one doesn't really exist. She is the Charlotte that she is in Sanditon, but he has never seen that because there's not the same opportunities in Willingdon. So he he blame and he he has that final scene with her where he uh, right before Colburn, really bad timing Colburns, but when they burst in the room like Charlotte, say you'll come with. Right, and Ralph is telling her Sanditon is making you different, and she yeah. says it's not Sanditon. The, it is who she is, but I think the longer she stays there, he thinks these people, this town is changing my Charlotte. And so at that point, when he came up and said, I've come to take you home, it wasn't out of a place of insecurity. I think he felt he had to save her from right. these people. He had to save her from this town. And that just rubbed me really the wrong way. What do you think about the scene that's really before that, where Georgiana and Charlotte are talking and Charlotte's giving Georgiana a hard time about this engagement to um, Lord Hen Harry. And he, she turns around and gives Charlotte a hard, hard time about the fact that she's going to marry a man she doesn't love too. And he appears and we don't know what he heard. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you think he heard? I think he might have heard the tail end of it, but I don't think he heard a lot of it because that is the point where his actions started to turn. Well, because she doesn't say she's in love with Colburn, but Georgiana says mm -hmm. that Charlotte's in love with Colburn. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think his fear really increased at that point. Yeah. The scene it's I really thought cool. you were talking about when you said the scene before that, I thought you were talking about when he says he just shows up on the doorstep before she, before, uh, Georgiana has her party and says, I've come to take you home. I thought you were talking about before that scene, but you're talking no. about before the scene when he said Sanditon. That's why I said the book one, because that's the only thing I could think of that was before that. No, okay. no. I get I'm, yeah. I'm with you now. I remember now. Yeah, I do. I think he actually might have heard because I remember thinking that when I watched it, the look on his face was different when he walked in there. It was very like he was very suspicious. And it's certainly the way Georgiana left the room. Yeah. Very quickly. Yeah. Like I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I think I don't know I, what he's heard, but again, he's not stupid. He can deduce things. And I think it was made very, very real and clear to him when the Colburns came in and how Charlotte physically reacted to Colburn coming in, but also how she, she couldn't say, she can't say no to Alexander. No, she, she could, but she won't because she doesn't want to. So I think that he, as a, as a fairly astute person, I think he picked up on, on what was happening there. Well, especially um, because of her relationship with the girls. There's no way she would have turned him down. And when it came to Augusta, you know, that was really important. And so. But he was going to ask her, didn't she say, do not ask me to do this, Ralph, or don't ask me not to do this, Ralph, because she, he was right. going to ask her not to go anyway. Yes, she did. I mean, it was, don't remember the exact verbiage. But it was like, I have to do this. This will, this, And then she says, then this is home. the last thing. And then I'll go home with you. Yeah. And so he hangs out with the Parkers, you know. I mean, at one point he is with the Parkers when he's trying to, I don't know where he's staying, but he uh, walks up and he's, when they arrive back, he says, Okay, so maybe he wasn't with the Parkers to begin with. He wasn't. So what happened was, as they arrived back in the carriage, he walks up from we don't know where, and he had been waiting for her to return. I'm mm -hmm. sure quite nervously. Yeah. And then just as she, uh, after um, Xander and Augusta leave in the carriage, that's when he walks up. And then just as he's about to say something about let's go home or something like that, 
that's when Georgiana walks out and announces that Mary's sick. Mm -hmm. And so then they go inside and she goes upstairs to be with Mary and he's stuck downstairs with the um, Montrose's Montrose's and Arthur yeah. and uh, um, An Angie's still there at that point. Uh, yeah, I, she was down there. Yes, because she's raising or the Agnes, question. Not about, Angie, it's Agnes. Yes, it is Agnes. <laughs> That's why we said Angie. Uh, I, and she's there talking about the fact that um, she's concerned about her daughter and Miss Lady Montrose is saying, you know, had either right then or earlier, she'd said about um, her children, I think it was earlier at dinner, about her children uh, spreading their wings. And she was trying to convince her, Agnes, of that. And she says something about, you know, isn't your daughter free to make her own decision about who to marry? And that comes out that, no, that's not really the case. She was, mm -hmm. her mother stopped her and yeah. he's hearing all of this, and, which is good because yeah. then it makes him really aware of what's going on. So when he talks to her later, he says, you never really, after everybody's left, he says to Charlotte, you never really had a choice did you about marrying me mm -hmm. and she's like no and i can't marry you you know that's he opens the door he did but he gave her opportunity to get yeah. out which was very yeah. noble i mean that you it was in the time period you that wasn't something that was done especially as far as i mean their wedding was in two weeks so i mean it's according to her mother <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it was, the bands had to have been read. It was a contract that they entered into. And so what he did for her was very gracious and very oh, kind. Yes. And the yeah. other thing that happened too, was Lady Montrose pointing out that Colburn and Charlotte weren't a carriage alone together, except for Augusta. And I think that her goal in that was because she assumed that Ralph was just as empty headed as every other man she had encountered. I think what she was going for there was Ralph, get your girl. And get your fiance and get your ducks in a row with her. But what all it served to do is help him to further cement. Okay, she's in love with this man. This mm -hmm. is this is what I was fearing. This is actually what's happening. Oh, she's a, she's such a gossip. I mean. <laughs> but I think she because she wanted Colburn for her daughter, so I think that she wanted Ralph to get Charlotte to go. That could also reflect badly on Colburn. She just. You know, oh, she, she cares. after every juicy little thing she can find out about somebody. I agree with that. But I also think that she wouldn't have cared as long as because there wasn't a scandal. It was just those people in the room who were aware of it. So I think for her, Colburn still had all the money to make her problems go away. So she was going to do what she could to get her daughter to marry that man. Oh, yeah. I'm that's yeah, obviously that's the case. But regardless, she could not help herself. She was that kind of person that. I mean, look how she was towards Lady uh, Susan, you know, and, uh, you know, she's just that kind of gossipy, conniving person. She is. Yeah. I, but I think she's also very manipulative and strategic. And I yep. think that she, when she says things, there's always a game in her head that she's trying to win. Right. But she isn't super intelligent. She doesn't know. That's why know? most of her things fail. But she's trying to win something. Yeah, yeah. Well, take care of herself. It's all about taking care of herself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think with right. Ralph, the other the other scene with him that kind of rubbed me the wrong way was this the ball scene where he's sitting down at the table with Lady Susan and he's talking about how altered Charlotte is and how he doesn't like who she is here. And the reason I didn't like that is because kind of what we've already said, he is not looking at this as this is who Charlotte is. He is basically saying Charlotte is different here. She's not really who she is here. She's, right. it, it, and if you're saying that, you might as well be saying she's pretending. She's putting out a pretense. She's trying to please you people. And that's that just shows how little he knew Charlotte. Right. If he thought Charlotte was able to do that. If he thought that's what Charlotte would do, he didn't know her very well in the first place. He never really knew her. So he's in love with this idea of a person. He's in love with this right, right. person that he's created in his head that doesn't exist. And so as he... Once he voiced that, it's almost like he acted on that always. 
Like that's the viewpoint he was going after every situation in that town was okay. I gotta get, I have to save Charlotte from this town because they're changing her. And it, it, it just wasn't. It, it's the way he made sense of it. Yes, exactly. And he was Maybe. afraid. Mm-hmm. He he right. knew that she was slipping. He knew that the reason he didn't like who she was there was because who she was there, it's not that she was a bad person there. It's because who she was there didn't fit with who he was always. Right. Yeah. And so he was afraid that he he knew she was slipping away. And just the idea that he didn't know her, it, it made it easier. Because at first when he gave her that book, I was like, oh, don't make me like this guy. I know that he's not going to end up with Charlotte. If you make me like him, I'm going to be very upset because then I'm going to want her with him. So they did add these. It didn't, they didn't make Ralph a bad guy. They didn't no. make him awful. They didn't, I don't understand all the hate that he gets. I don't, I don't get it because he wasn't a bad person. He was very kind and good to her. He was just afraid and insecure. And so it was, I like that that's how they wrote his character so that it was easier to let him go. And it was easier to say, okay, you know what? Charlotte's not right for Ralph anyway. Yeah, right. Ralph's not right for Charlotte, but Charlotte's really not right for Ralph. He wants someone who he could marry and who could bear all of his children and be still in Willingdon and help him with his with their estate if they have. I don't even know if he comes from a gentleman's family. A farm. I don't know. He has a farm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he was a tenant or if he was a landowner, but either way, that's what he wants. Charlotte would never be satisfied with that. He needs no. someone better suited to him. And I hope he gets it. No. No, although he realized it at the end that this was not what she wanted and, mm-hmm. and and that conversation they have where she says you must hate me and he's like i i can never hate you i have nothing but love for you i mean that is such a sweet response you know given the situation mm-hmm. he's the one who's going to go back to willingdon and tell them all what's going on yep you know it's it's yeah and so for maybe, that statement alone people should not hate ralph right you think the fans hate Ralph? Yes. A lot oh. of people, a lot of people hate Ralph. They did not like how he interrupted Colburn and Charlotte, but Colburn kind of interrupted Colburn and Charlotte. That wasn't Ralph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Colburn brought this on himself. <laughs> I think you are the you are the loudest voice in that camp. <laughs> and you need yes, to leave that I charge. <laughs> yeah. The person who's responsible for the situation is him. Yes. Not- I think much like with the Sydney, the people who hate Colburn because they love Sydney so much, I think it's the same thing with Ralph. They hate Ralph because they want Colburn. But yeah. you have to be able to look at the situations. It's we talk about Gilmore Girls on my other podcast, and there's this the big debate in Gilmore Girls is Logan or Jess because they have their own infatuations of who they relate to. But you have to with these shows. I mean, if you want to actually discuss the characters and really f- believe what they're doing, what these actors are doing. You have to look at the characters themselves and what's good for them and what's not good for them. And I don't think Ralph was bad for Charlotte necessarily. It's just they wouldn't work together. Neither one of them wanted what the other one wanted. Yeah, they would have been miserable. They would have. And Ralph would have been, and I don't want Ralph to be miserable. I want him to live a happy life. I want him to find a woman who's going to be happy and willing to burying his children and keeping the house. I told you he had, she had plenty of other sisters. <laughs> I do. So we were asked in the live what story we continue. I kind of want to go back to Willingdon and see which sister he picks. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. only and I want to know and Charlotte are taken. So who's the third line? <laughs> and I want to know more about Allison and uh, Declan. Yes, Declan. I love them. See, there's so many avenues you could pursue. There's so yeah. many things. It doesn't happen. And I think people think, well, Charlotte, because that was said in the live that one person was like, I hated Charlotte. And someone said, well, how did you watch Sanditon? Because it's been about Charlotte, but Charlotte is not Sanditon. She's uh-huh. just a main character, but she's not all Sanditon is. There's so many different avenues to go here. Yeah. Yeah. So just, and we actually got a comment on our YouTube uh i just saw it today where someone said please beg justin young for a continuation and i want you guys to know that well janice and i would like to have that sort of influence and power we really don't <laughs> yeah. but i will yeah. say here justin young please consider doing some sort of spinoff with i mean you've got leo and augusta you've got georgiana and otis and agnes you've got ralph and willingdon and the the hey woods oh my gosh i couldn't remember their last name <laughs> Haywoods. Ralph Willingdon in the Haywoods. You've got Leo. Oh, I already said Leo and Augusta. 
You could do the Montroses well, because you know that they're going to move on. You, you've got Samuel and Lady, Samuel, Susan, Lady Susan, and Susan. I knew I was I forgetting an important forget one. That. Yeah. <laughs> you could even do Rowley Price and Lady Debham. I'm sure Chris Marshall and Kate Parker. That's not her name. Yeah. Isn't Ashfield. That, Kate Ashfield. Ashfield. Yeah. I'm sure that Marshall, Chris Marshall and Kate Ashley would be willing to even make appearances. And I'm Turlow could make it appearances. He doesn't have, they don't have to be in everything, but there are avenues to go and people yeah. will watch it. Especially, yeah. I think, I think now there's a better chance of people watching this and not having it get canceled because of how hard the fandom fought for it. That if okay. they keep giving them stuff, they're just going to gobble it up. <laughs> people to talk to her is not just on its PBS. Yes. Because they're the ones who made it happen. Mm-hmm. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that that will ever happen again. No, I, I doubt that they will continue, but it would be nice. Like, even if Justin like wanted to write, I know that screenplays and books are not the same (laughs) thing, but if you want to write a screenplay and put it in book form, we will read it. Yeah. (laughs) We will all read it. (laughs) I'd be willing to just read the parts he already wrote. Yes. As background for the characters. I mean, I'd outline that. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know what he's into now. Of course, with those strikes on, that doesn't really help. Well, is he part of the the WAG group though? I you know because I have it's, no I, idea. I think it's only those who are in the American version of the guild who are on strike. No, I don't think so because at least somebody made a comment that um well, it's Screen Actor Guild of America and that writers, Rose Williams is part of SAG, but she does a lot of work here okay like she's been on american horror story and she's been on other stuff like i think she's been on that i don't know but But i don't know i don't know so i think that there's i think there is actually the i think a lot of british actors who are based in the uk are not part of the screen actors guild because i think i i I don't think it's just the screen actors guild that's on strike i think it's screen actors guild of america that's on strike right but a lot of times you'll see other unions that will honor that by not that's true you know yeah, I would so. be interested to see. There was also someone wrote on our YouTube that in England they are not getting all the scenes that we got in America. I I heard that they said that they're cutting out some scenes, and even on the DVDs they aren't getting all the scenes. Well, that's so crazy. They've been watching it on YouTube. Oh yeah, hmm. and I still haven't seen that uh, deleted scene yet. I forgot to go look it up last night. Oh, uh, the one I saw uh, the, that I could find was just of um, Xander walking on the estate and seeing the house in the background. It was not, I didn't think it was much, at least the one I saw. Oh, okay. Okay. So I I, I did uh, listen to a couple of interviews with, with him, with Ben, that were good. I would good. love to talk with him. Yeah. I think that's the best we can really do with Ralph. Uh, let us know. Did we forget anything? Did you agree with our assessment? And if you are one who does not like Ralph at all, let us know in the comments why. What is it you have against this man? Um, and was there ever a time when you felt soft towards him? Because I think there was a lot of opportunities to feel soft towards him. There were times right. I almost felt guilty that I didn't want him with her. <laughs> so, right, I mean, right. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm not sure what you're watching. So let us know in the comments. Check out our Facebook group. It's the Sanderson Chronicle Sanderson Family Fan Club. We're trying to be more active in there. We're trying to do more things for our members. And don't forget, we do have memberships available. The first package or the first membership deal is $2.99. And you get some extra perks for there. The next one is $7.99. You get some more perks. And the final one is $24.99 when you get a whole bunch of perks. The reason that one's so expensive is because it is a lot, a lot of extra work for me. So um, that's why it's that expensive, but you can subscribe to our YouTube channel totally free. And we need you to do that actually, because we are trying to reach out to some actors and some writers that run the show, some cast and crew who aren't involved in the WAG strike or the SAG strike who are able to talk or who want to talk. We're trying to reach out to them. And one of the first things the agents and representatives will look at is how many subscribers we have on our YouTube channel or how many listeners we have on our podcast channels, because they want to make sure that they're their client is going to be heard. So make sure you're subscribing to our channel. Um, Our goal right now, we're aiming for a thousand. So if you are listening to this and you have not subscribed, please go and subscribe to that. Um, Next week, we're bringing you a Mrs. Wheatley episode, Mrs. Wheatley and her relationships with other people. It'll be like this one where it'll be rolled into one because Mrs. Wheatley is, she's a background character, but she's important. So we're going to talk about her and her relationships over the two seasons we got her 
all in one episode and that's coming at you next week so for now i guess we'll just see you real soon bye guys bye bye are you craving more tsc content head on over to our social media accounts you can find us on twitter instagram and our facebook group the sanderson chronicles sanderson family fan club also check out our website the sanderson of course we want to hear from you we want to know what you want to hear and what your thoughts are email us at the.sandersonchronicles at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in every week for new episodes.